we are going to talk about the urban land use and which model can represent a city's growth and development most accurately. First of all, a city is a human urbanized settlement which can be defined as a permanent and densely settled place with administratively defined boundaries, whose members work primarily on non-agricultural tasks. Urbanization is an increase of population living in urban areas, taking place when the city's population grows more rapidly than the population as a whole. There are several reasons affecting urbanization. For example, migration from rural to urban areas caused by push factors, for example, low wages, with undeveloped infrastructure, and pool factors such as educational and job opportunities. But do cities grow and develop similar to each other? And is there a common model to represent them? Well, cities generally have extensive systems for urban land use, including a central commercial area, surrounding industrial zone and suburban outer zones expanding and developing as the city grows. So, most of the cities can follow the similar structure, which can be represented by different models, for instance, the Burgess concentric model. The basic model was created in 1925, in which the land value and social class with housing increased with the distance from the city center, as it was assumed that new people would migrate into the inner city areas where housing was cheapest and closest to the job. However, this model is too basic and unrealistic. It's based on Chicago in 1920s, so today there are no cities which can follow this model. Another example is an urban land use in developing countries, take Latin American cities, in which the CBD has developed around its colonial core and there is a commercial avenue extending from it. Generally, they reach the closest city center, whereas the very poor are more likely to be found at the periphery. As a result, better quality land is occupied by the wealthy, making segregation by wealth, race, and ethnicity more evident. Manufacturing is commonly scattered throughout the city. Alternatively, the accurate model for urban land use is Homer Hoyt's sector model, proposed in 1939. It is a modification of the Burgess model of city development. The benefits of the application of this model include the fact that it allows for an outward progression of growth. Who was Homer Hoyt? Homer Hoyt was an American economist who has conducted a path-breaking research on land economy, developing a new sector model, the Hoyt model. The Hoyt sector model emphasizes the importance of transport routes and the incompatibility of various land uses. At the time after World War II, mixed race neighborhoods were considered unstable, and the corresponding attitude towards landing came to be known as redlining because of the color used on the maps to designate a high risk neighborhood. Out of this work emerged the sector theory that replaced Ernest Burgess concentric zone theory. The sector model has considered ecological factors plus economic rent concept to explain the land use pattern stress on the role of transport routes and affecting the special arrangement of the city. Both the distance and direction of roads from the city center are considered. Brings location of industrial and environmental amenity values as determinants in a residential place. For example, sectors of high-class residential areas tend to grow towards higher grounds, sites with a better view, more open space, the homes of influential leaders within the communities and existing outlying smaller settlements. Moreover, this model applies to numerous British cities. Also, if it turns 90 degrees counterclockwise, it fits the city of Monken Gladbach reasonably accurately. For example, let's look at the Northampton with a population of 215,000 people. After a little bit of analyzing and comparing, we have applied the model onto our map, which as a result fitted perfectly. In this example, we can clearly see the railroad and industrial zone by zooming in and comparing the quality of housing, the lower, middle, and upper class housing was determined. And the commercial area was full of shops, cafes, stores, so we could find the CBD too. Another example is Bunbury. Which proves the accuracy of the model. That's it for today. Thank you for your attention.